Shut up and sit down. Welcome once again, Mark and Ken, on episode 201. What's the crack? We did that slightly wrong. We did it slightly wrong, but sure, we're not going to redo it. Just yeah, saying. exactly. Um, <laughs> we went past that. The boat has sailed on us, changing our mind on how we're... Yeah, sometimes I pause, and sometimes I boat don't pause. Do you know what? It's hard doing it over, over Zoom or over Messenger or any video app. I think we've done a relatively good job. So far. Yeah, like we don't generally cut in too much of each other. We've kind of a good syn- synchronicity. It, it only kind of happens occasionally. It's just because we can't see like our, you know, facial cues. Yeah, like. I, I remember radio stations when the f- pandemic first hit. They were like testing the war. There was a few shows where they have two presenters, and two presenters did it from their house, separate houses. Yeah, and they were like, they just kept cu- either cutting in each other or there'd be just long pauses. Yeah, and neither of those things is good. No, I think for us, what helps is is it rec- it's recorded, so we can actually take out a lot of long pauses that there actually is. Yeah. We are currently suffering through a heat wave. Which is a lot of bollocks. Do you know, there's an official term in terms of getting what is actually classed as a heat wave. So, like, <laughs> you, you have to have four consecutive days with above normal temperatures. Only time. four? Yeah, four or five, I think. Maybe five. Oh, I think it's four, though, of above normal temperatures. So we're officially, we can say we're in a heat wave. So, like, that's, that's a bit mad. Like, and it's only four at the time of the year. So, like, you could have it, like, technically, you could have a heat wave in December. And does it have to be, like, a certain amount over the temperature, or is it just, like, over temperature? I think it's above normal for that time of the year. So like if it's if it's generally between fifteen and twenty degrees, so there'll be a fluctuation like that, and it's twenty five degrees for five days in a row, then you're like, okay, this is officially a heat wave. And I should point out right now, I am currently doing the podcast <laughs> semi naked, and this is a, a advantage of doing a recorded podcast without video. I can do this. <laughs> you like to point that out, don't you? I do like I like to give people visual cues. But I've learned my lesson slightly. So I just pulled the blind down because well, we don't want to repeat of the last time. <laughs> you don't want the guards calling again. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of vegetation right around. They planted a lot of trees <laughs> since then. <laughs> so you can barely see in. Our, the heat wave that Ireland is currently facing, it's kind of influenced our stories. I know like we have a, we're going to be talking about how much it costs to run a fan at night and we're also going to be talking about sunburn stories do you get sunburned a lot well, i'm like kind of half fucking gingery so yeah i get sunburned a lot i get yeah i've pretty fair skin and i think i'm the most sunburnable person alive on the planet i think there's this thing as well with irish people where it's like i'm not wearing sunscreen there's the, definitely is i work outdoors it's been nearly 30 degrees for like the past week and a half every day. And people come up to me and go, oh, are you wearing sun cream? It's like, yes, <laughs> it is scorching <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm in direct sunlight for eight of the like hours that I'm awake. I am wearing sun cream. You ever hear like a kind of older Irish people call it factor? Factor. You are yeah. the factor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My dad currently believes if he puts sun cream on, he'll get burnt. <laughs> Good logic. He he was saying that. He's like, I was in Australia and I was wasn't wearing sun cream and I was tanning nicely and then I put them on and I burnt. And that's not how my dad actually sounds. So the people are like, What kind of, who is that? Who <laughs> do you have a different dad? But uh, yeah. It's yeah, there is a kind of a especially older Irish people, there's a, like it's where at home that like oh we wouldn't be putting on sun cream you wouldn't want to be burning <laughs> you wouldn't want to be getting putting on too much of that stuff now <laughs> it causes skin cancer yeah exactly um you know it's mad like it, temperatures because we're talking like 30 degrees heat um if it, people are listening in america and other parts of the world that don't use the metric system they're like how hot is that i don't know like it got to 45 degrees track temperature on an airport in Cork. 
and they had to start watering the they had to start wetting down the tarmac because the ground started peeling up like they're afraid that the runways start breaking up they were actually saying that the roads in ireland won't be able to take the temperature if it keeps rising that we're going to see like roads expanding and like tarmac coming up that always happens anyway. you ever see it bubbling yeah i know like uh, it's kind of typical for Irish people to say, oh, I wouldn't mind a bit of rain now. That, anytime we get like three days of heat, people are like, I wouldn't mind a bit of rain. I, I don't, don't want to sound like that person, but I, like, I, like I am struggling here at this heat. You, it, they're talking about like, bringing in a hose ban again. Well, that always happens. And there's, another, there's a kind of surprising thing in Ireland where anytime we get like two days of like good weather, suddenly the Irish water people are like, oh, Jesus, no. If you should wash in water now, don't drink too much. Like, yeah, there's a shortage of water, and like it rains like ninety nine percent of the year, and you're like, what happened to all the rain we got? What happened to all the flooding? Where did all that water go to? And they're like, oh, and we're also an island surrounded by water. You know, like you can't drink salt water and all that, but like a lot of the water we use isn't used for drinking. Like, yeah. Is salt water da- bad for plants? Probably is, actually. I don't know. Well, I don't know, because surely rain contains a certain amount of salt water. Yeah, that's true. No, that comes from the uh, sea. It evaporates up. Clouds break. So, like, like you could use... It's just water is used stupid. Like, the water in your tidal bowl is drinkable. Like, that's fucking laughable. Well... A lot of the like, a lot of the waters is lost as well in those like canals. They're like, I don't know where I went to. We're gonna probably move away uh, from that right now. And other stories <laughs> that we're going to be talking about are Peppa Pig, and we have a conspiracy theory about the Olympics, or, or a conspiracy theory that was created by some Olympic athletes, I should say. And our idiots of the week are a person who drank Ribena for the first time, and. <laughs> a person who wants to test their faith. Yeah, clown. You should always do a hesitantly, uh, like, about terms of intestine fate. You should try out something small first and gradually get bigger. I remember when my wiper blades, anytime there was, like, went below certain degrees, they used to snap, there used to be things that used to snap on them they, from the motor. Uh, so they, the motor would spin, but the blades wouldn't move. They just fucking, whatever about the car. And that that happened to me like three times, so I was like, I was driving back, and they just went, and so I was like, I had to pull in, clean off my windows. I was like, okay, if there is a god, he'll stop it raining right now, and I'll make a home. And then it, then it stopped, and I drove on a bit, and it started raining again. I was like, fuck you, you do not exist. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I converted to paganism. <laughs> now you worship the trees. Now I worship the trees. Do you know what the thing is? It's probably the one religion that won't be accepted in society is paganism. Oh yeah, uh, like if... it's got so much st- stigma around it because that's the way that they intended it to be when they tried to convert everybody. I was in Stephen's Green on Sunday. It's a lovely Sunday. Lie down screen, and I was watching people doing their yoga. Some people are doing this, like I don't know if it was like uh some. It's not chi going. Some kind of like. Asian. Tai Chi. Tai Chi. It was like Tai Chi. They're doing Tai Chi. There's people doing yoga. I was like, do you know, paganism, it just kind of struck me that paganism would not be accepted right now in the, in society. I know we're all about embracing cultures in Ireland and making everyone feel welcome and all that, but like, if I brought a lamb into the Stephen screen and slaughtered it as an <laughs> offering to the sun gods for the good weather that we've got, I'm pretty sure someone would call the guards. <laughs> <laughs> Someone would definitely but, call the guards. Like you could go with neo paganism. That's not accepted either. What's neo paganism? They, they don't really like. They don't do any of the slaughter and, and the sacrifice and stuff. But like, it's basically just you should respect nature, pretty much. Ah, uh, that's that's like that's not real paganism. Real paganism is you bring a, sl- a sheep to Stephen's screen, you slaughter it there for the sun gods. Do you know that that's where the the confusion with Satanism came in. Because of paganisms. Yeah, when first start converting people, paganism was a big thing. When they were like, oh, no, 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 that's the worship of Satan. Yeah, because they're slaughtering animals. But yeah, then, and that, uh, that's where your idea, like Satanists don't actually slaughter animals. Yeah, well, didn't, like, wasn't there something in, in the Bible about some guy who was going to 
give his son up to an offer to the gods or something like that. Yeah, and the Bible also says that you should slaughter animals. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like we should probably get off. We're definitely gonna get in trouble if we keep shitting on about um, uh, fucking religions. We're definitely getting in trouble. This is kind of a sore subject you're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah, paganism is it's mad that like since it's a very old, it's kind of like if you, people look at you weird if you say, "Oh yeah, I've converted to Greek mythology." <laughs> um, what the Viking one is coming back? Which one, a Norse? Yeah, that that uh, that's kind of coming back a bit. Oh, really? People are converting to Norse mythology. Yeah. All right, fair enough. I okay, guess Greek will come back if DC ever get their shit together because they fringe on Greek mythology. Yeah. Aries and all that. So yeah, we should go in on the show, and we'll be going back to the heat wave. Uh, like I said, we're getting record temperatures today. Because we record this on a Wednesday, so today it's allegedly meant to go up to 32 degrees temperature. Ireland's hottest ever temperature has was like 33.3 degrees, so like we'll get very close to the record level. Now it's set in 1986, I think, 1986, 1987, uh, it was set. We had hot weather for the last few nights, and it's been tough to sleep. How has it been sleeping in your household? Uh, it's not too because uh, it just leaves the blinds pulled all day. See that we're going to go into some few of the tips. A UK paper, uh, I think the Guardian, ha- was given in terms of like how you can keep your house cooler. And one of the tips they did say is actually keeping the blinds shut. So if you're at work all day, it's not you're not going to really mind if your blinds are pulled. But they were, were saying about keeping your blinds pulled during the day, and that'll keep some of the heat out. Yeah, like I've got blackout blinds, so just like pull the blinds and. I generally do keep my blinds down, and I, and I keep the windows up open. But oh my god, my room is just scorching hot. On like Sunday night, I just woke up, and it was like I just couldn't sleep at half one. I was up for six, and then I think I, I think I kind of got sleep sleep a tree. I woke up that, that that morning and was like, I am buying a fan. <laughs> And there's a lot of people who probably had similar ideas to me, like, let's let's fucking just buy a fan. I imagine fans are gone like gym equipment, it's gone like kettlebells. I imagine fans are being sold for ridiculous money right now. Oh, I'd say so. Yeah, and the UK actually. So, I think some energy company, oh, energy switching service, they've done a few figures up in terms of how much it costs to run a fan at night. So the figures they suggested for the entire UK was 1.7 million a day energy bills will cost to run electric fan. For the whole country? Yeah. So like, but like that works out uh, for eight hours. If you have it on for eight hours, it works out uh, 7p uh, for the eight hours. So it uses fuck all electricity. So I was like freaking out. I was like, because I've seen the headlines, I was like, "Oh, maybe I won't get a uh, fan if it's if it's gonna be like very expensive to run." Because I thought, like, you know, like it's gonna be left on all all day. It's probably gonna be I don't know the figure on it, but it's probably gonna cost a lot. But yeah, it costs about for the eight hours, cost about seven p. Yeah, I would have thought it would have been a lot more than that. So, like, I imagine like people in the article also thought it would cost a lot more because. They still went down the road. They're like, if you want to save a bit of money, <laughs> here are a few helpful tips in order to cool your house at night without costing you a fortune. Well, it's only 7p. <laughs> like, I can leave this thing on. <laughs> yeah, so leave it on 24 hours a day. It's less than 1p an hour. So, like, that's like a more, more, yeah, if you left on for the entire day, it costs like less than 24 pounds 20 21 yeah 21 pounds <laughs> well a couple of cents left over yeah so like they so they gave a few things like some of them were quite obvious it was like one of the things that they gave leave the windows open don't sleep with a bed cover on and one of the more ob- odd ones was, was like if you have a partner sleep in separate beds <laughs> <laughs> wonder how that would go down yeah we're sleeping in separate beds i imagine there's not a whole lot of snuggling going on 
in beds in this weather. It's much like, get the fuck away from me. You're like a million yeah, degrees. Too warm for that shit. Yeah, and I sleep with a lower tog rated duvet. My one is like a really high tog rating. It's like for the winter. And even in the winter, it is way too hot. <laughs> like I am usually <laughs> taking it off, <laughs> and then in a few like few minutes later, put it back on, waking up and go. I need to. I need to take it off. I wake up to, like covered in sweat sometimes. It is like I never. I never have a normal temperature. You're unable to regulate your own body temperature. No, I'm really, I'm really bad at it. And yeah, they said like <laughs> take a cold shower before going to bed. There's another one. And then there was this, like. The blinds, like you said, keep your blinds pulled out during the day. Well, imagine if you're in your house during the day, you're not going to keep the blinds pulled. I do. <laughs> I do. Like, I, 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 I was on holidays there for a whole week. I didn't open the blinds. Yeah, another kind of good one was, like, use a, use a water bottle and put cold water into it. So use a hot water bottle, but put freezing cold water into it and leave it in your fridge. And then put that in your bed when you're going to bed. And... It helps uh, cool you down. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> the last one's like, chill a pair of socks in the fridge and put them on before bed. And that's only going to last for like so long though. Like, you're still going to, you're going to wake up roasting. And then you your socks. socks. Uh, yeah, yeah. I could not sleep with a pair of socks on. I think you're, you're, you're a psychopath if you go to bed with socks on. <laughs> Yeah, that that is mad. Put your, know what you should do. Put your duvet in the in the fridge. If you you're gonna probably have to take out a lot of content, or put like a light sheet in the bed. And then in the I I seen somebody saying that. Put um, put your bed clothes in the freezer, and I was like, but that's not going to be practical. And then it's going to be wet like, as soon as they rapidly heat up. Yeah, and you're going to have the whole problem of first you're going to need nothing in your freezer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Leaving out everything. Then, this is the normal thing to do, but like I only go to bed when I'm like absolutely bothered. So like you're kind of going to go, oh, the effort now of making the bed. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, I just I just sleep on top of the on the blanket. Like I I don't, and sometimes I'll, I'll get like a, a sheet and I'll just use a sheet instead of my blanket. And that's how I, I saw that. I imagine you could probably roll up a sheet quite like snugly you could, and stick it in the freezer. That's not taking up a whole lot of space. But if you try to use your duvet, <laughs> good luck getting that thing. You have a massive freezer. <laughs> Sleep in your yeah. freezer <laughs> in that case. Do you have any tips yourself? Do you like if your house is a bit hot or if you're sleep- sleeping in, like in a foreign country where you didn't get air conditioning? No, I like, did right? don't really open the blinds that's all i do <laughs> yeah like it's it's quite mad and it like since ireland doesn't get a whole lot of hot weather we don't really we don't really deal well in the heat we don't we don't know how to really operate ourselves in the heat it's kind of like when we get a bit of snow i imagine yeah, we don't do well screens yeah like i imagine a lot of eastern european people that live here now make fun of us at how bad we are dealing with the lightest covering the snow our entire country shuts down we're like hey how are we going to cope and it's like two inches of snow and they're like ha ha this is funny we have 10 <laughs> but they're they're probably just as bad now because they've been here for so long yeah no imagine that they've come soft like the irish yeah so i decided I, when i was looking up in the fan story i went down a like kind of a bit of a wormhole and I started looking into sunburn because we like I said we are really bad with sunburn we generally don't put on sun cream too well and apparently our American cousins aren't that great or at least they weren't in the early 90s there's a few of these stories was from reddit and they'd previously asked over the years give us your sunburn stories and yeah, I got a few flavorings of sunburn stories. Do you have any bad sunburn stories yourself? I went to Florida with my parents when I was like 10. And I got really, really badly sunburnt in a swimming pool for the whole rest of the holiday. People like unintentionally slapping me on the back and touching my back and stuff. And I was like, oh. yeah. That is, yeah. You, you don't realize, and you, you know when you get that badly burnt, it's like even putting on a t-shirt hurts. Yeah. Like, and people give you like a light t shirt, like a sports top, and those things like are feel like a grater on your back. Yeah, it's just rotten. Yeah, there's one person said the worst sunburn I ever 
received was in spring of 92. I went to Florida and spent a day on the beach. I didn't use sun cream. Of course you didn't. <laughs> as I've <laughs> never gotten sunburn. The worst I got was I turned a little pink. and after, Or I think it's a girl. And she would go back the next day. I have all of skin and I generally don't burn. Apparently being closer to the equator makes the sun hotter. Who, Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> I was wearing a tong and a bikini. Definitely a girl then. <laughs> and when? Well, <laughs> I was wearing a tong and a bikini. And sunburn was so bad that I kept a tan line for three years after. For three years? Yeah, for three years after. Without, <laughs> without tanning anymore. I've learned my lesson. It says I've learned if I'm somewhere close to the equator, use sun cream. As for the sunburn, I suffered through it and it was only bad for a few days. So it wasn't that bad. I remember it was three years ago and me and my friends decided to go to Kerklow. I forgot my sun cream. We got up really early in the morning. Kerklow is about two hours away for us. So we wanted to get there for like sun, some of the weather. So we left about eight o'clock. Got there about 11-ish because we stopped in the garage. And I realized I forgot my sun cream. And my friend brought his, but he picked the wrong bottle up. He picked up a factor 50. And it was kind <laughs> of a it was kind of a cloudy day. It was 18 degrees. It was a slight bit of a breeze. And we're like, oh, well, we're not putting on factor 50. We want to give a bit of a tan. We left it out. And there, there was... A family, and the, I'd say the mother was approaching her 60s. There was a kind of grandmother there, and they had, like, kids. And they're sitting directly behind us. And I, I just, to this day, I just wonder, they're like, they, I'm surprised they didn't say it and how badly burnt we got. They, I, we were getting a few looks at off them, and they didn't say it. And I imagine, like, them just thinking, what fucking idiots they are. How are they still lying out in that sun that they're that badly burnt? <laughs> Because I didn't, I had sunglasses on, so I didn't actually realize that, like, my entire body was pink red. And uh, I decided to then uh. go for an, I got, went up, got an ice cream with my friend. And got, oh, I'm kind of getting a bit burnt. I could see through the sunglasses. I was, I was again a little bit pink. So I decided to put on the Factor 50 so I didn't get anybody burnt and like, lay back down and listen to a podcast. Woke up and could start to feel it. So I put on my t shirt and I was like, oh, I'm really badly burnt. My f- and my friends like, oh, well, we'll lie here for a few more hours. So I put the t-shirt on, lay there for a few more hours, still getting burnt, still f- really feeling the effects of it. But they never really thought too much of it. One of my friends was just sunburned on half his body because of the way the sun was, and the other side was blocked out. Another one like got bad as well, but we didn't really realize how bad it was until we really got home. One one of the lads said he started hallucinating. He, he said he just woke up in, in the middle of the night and just started screaming out his window. <laughs> he was just, <laughs> he, while still asleep. <laughs> he lit, and then the other thing, other lad was, uh, he, he just started getting blisters on his chest. Couldn't move all day. And I, it was about three days after we went to the beach. I didn't realize that I had some... I was suffering from sunstroke. Until then, my my entire chest w- was blistered. It was like these blisters coming up on it. It was bubbling away, and it was still about twenty one degrees around. It was like it must be another heat wave. It was like twenty one, twenty two degrees. The next few days, I had like two hoodies on. I was slamming the doors and windows closed in my house. I was like, "Who keeps opening these fucking doors? It is fucking freezing in the house." Why do you have all the fucking doors on? They're like, Mark, I think you're suffering from a heat stroke. I was like, you're suffering from a heat stroke. And I slammed the doors. I was like, keep the fucking doors closed. And they're like, seriously, you need to go to the doctor. You're suffering. You're severely sick. And I was like, you're sick. (laughs) And it wasn't until like the third day I go, do you know what? Maybe maybe I am actually suffering from a heat stroke. (laughs) And I was like, my chest is really bad. I was like, I need to go to the chemist. And I was like, I remember going in there and I was like, I um suffering from, I think I'm suffering from heat stroke and I have severe burns. And I showed them a picture of my chest and they're like, 
they didn't give me a, like an aloe vera cream. They gave me stuff that you put on third degree burns. It was like, put this on three <laughs> times a day. Yeah. It's, right. Yeah. <laughs> Another person had a, I, I, I definitely feel this person's pain. And this is kind of a DIY sun cream on your back job. Have you ever had to do something like this? Uh, no, I I kind of avoid the sun. Oh, of avoid, course. Going out and avoid, <laughs> avoid people as much as possible. Do you know what? One of my hidden pleasures in life is being in a shaded room, looking out when it's sunny and just being so thankful I'm not out there. <laughs> I'm just like there's a little bit of me goes I'm, I do like the sun I do like being out but sometimes it's like really hot like on today I'll be looking outside going I'm so glad I'm not out there yeah fuck that but I definitely had had this experience before and it said my, mine is more embarrassing is that terrible but one time a few summers ago I was in a rush and tried to put sun cream on my own back Long story short, I was only able to cover certain spots and my back and my tan was, outline was like a claw. <laughs> I, I've done this before, like I've been to the beach with my friends and you know that thing like you don't want to ask a lad to put some cream on your back. So you're like, I'll, I'll do it myself. And you're kind of just like, you're trying to reach around, you're trying to get, like, there's just the center of your back that you just, you, unless you're have extremely flexible shoulders like you you're not getting your center of your back done and you, and you don't you just you're too too stubborn or pig-headed to ask your friends to put like to put some cream on your back so you're just like i'll go away i'll go away <laughs> and then you have like a kind of like a butterfly effect on your thing you see like a load of claw marks where you get like burnt <laughs> That that's like every Irish person ever. Yes, every Irish lad ever. Yeah, there is there is a way of running it. What you do, you say to your friend is, "Hey, can you put sun cream on my back?" And just say, "But no homo." And then once you say that, then you're covered. Then you're covered, and your friend can freely put sun cream on your back, and it's okay. And if anyone looks at you, say, "We said no homo." <laughs> and they're like, oh. I imagine you can put on, you ask your friend nowadays, put it on, no one's going to care. But certainly yeah, the, a few years ago. We moved on from uh, no homo rules. Yeah, yeah, you're not allowed. <laughs> you're certainly not allowed to say that anymore. <laughs> yeah, then now they're just like, oh, look, it's a lovely gay couple. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've been burned pretty bad uh, on my back before. Not, not been a, I actually have. I actually have very flexible shoulders now. <laughs> but I actually, I met when I was in Australia on my own. Uh, I went to the beach and I was just like, I didn't have anybody to put some cream on my back because I was obviously by myself. And I didn't want to ask somebody, a random a random stranger, to, hey, would you mind putting some cream on? Because that is weird. Uh, so, <laughs> but I, was, I managed to be able to cover, I think, pretty much all my back. I didn't get sunburned on my back. And I was able to reach the whole thing. So actually, since since I was like in my early twenties, I was like, I've have come pretty flexible shoulders. <laughs> Dude, I know somebody else who has very flexible shoulders. I imagine his back never gets burnt. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the the point where you don't realize you're sunburnt is like, I was in Clare surfing, and there was like, I went to t- I was out at the beach playing frisbee having a good time put some cream on but didn't re- didn't really think i was burnt and then i uh went for a pee and the the tan line was something fierce it was just like this st- stark difference between below the shorts and above the shorts so it was uh, <laughs> spectacularly i was like oh my fucking god <laughs> my my uncle had a, I think he went to uh, Ibiza one summer and wanted to be Mr. Big Balls, wanted to drive around in a convertible car, so re- rented one out for the day. Him him and the missus, my auntie, w- went went cruising. He decided to go where on the top on. We were like, safety first, so put on the seatbelt, of course. Drove around the strip around Ibiza in a, like some sports car, convertible. Roof down, of course. <laughs> got, got severely burnt, apart from where the belt was. 
and has oh, had, a, <laughs> had a, a fucking white strip for the rest of the holiday going up, up through his chest. <laughs> That's like every 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 Irish like da. <laughs> yeah, every Irish dad at some point did that, or you know they um they have the sunglasses on the string. Yeah, yeah, and they leave leave it down, and it leaves a mark where their sunglasses are. Like I remember, we went when we were small. We went to the the beach. I think we went to Tremor maybe, and uh, my dad went to sleep. Like it was really really hot there. My dad went to sleep under an umbrella. Yeah, and the sun like obviously started to move around, so he was asleep face down, and the the soles of his feet were sticking out under the umbrella. And, once, and then <laughs> it came time to go home and he was like, I, I can't even drive. And <laughs> like I think my mom was only learning to drive at the time. <laughs> and he was like, You're gonna have to drive home. And she's like, I don't know how to drive. Ken, <laughs> take the wheel. Today, Ken, you've become a man. <laughs> and it's the case. It was yeah, just if the guard like, stop you, I'll explain what happened. I don't understand. Yeah. Typical dad story, like that—that that is probably in the nineties. I'm very sure if your dad was like, if you stopped over having a child driving, he says, "Officer, the reason why the kid is driving is because I burnt my feet really bad. <laughs> I don't trust the wife." You'd be like, "Fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> Keep her going there. Keep her going there, son. <laughs> Keep her between the ditches." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're doing a grand job you're doing a grand job keep it going <laughs> we give you an escort home <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's, that's like Irish people I wonder if maybe UK people imagine there's parts of America maybe it doesn't get sun too much and I imagine we can't be the only people that are really bad when it comes to the heat oh no like I'd say anywhere that doesn't normally get like heat is pretty bad do you know what yeah. I definitely know Irish parents can sympathize with the plight that American parents are suffering through because I know a few parents have banned this TV show from their kids. They do not. uh, I know like when I was younger, stuff like South Park was banned in certain households. Simpsons, some even sometimes some households used to ban Simpsons, but. This yeah, show, I, I worked with a girl who was like, her parents didn't let her watch The Simpsons as a kid. I was like, what the fuck? Are yeah, parents do that? I know, like, but like this, this program is banned for a completely different reason. So, Simpsons is like a mild comedy sketch. They were edgy for the nineties, I guess, maybe eighties. They're edgy, um, but then Saber took over, and Simpsons looked like a little golden child. Yeah, Peppa the Pig, Ken. I'm. It's probably one of the things that put most people off having kids. Peppa Pig is what puts most people <laughs> off having kids. That and that Actually, sh- I, I like Peppa Pig. That and that little shark program. Oh, you know, Baby Shark, is it? Does that have a program? What? Huh? Does that have a program? Yeah, that is a program. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Kids programs are generally really, really annoying. But one of the more annoying things about Peppa Pig particularly is kids start to imitate Peppa the Pig. And if you have the kid who lived in the UK, that's perfectly fine. They'll talk like a normal UK person. If you're in, like, West Cork, or if you're in Offaly, or Dublin, or, like, New York, having having your little British kid is kind of like, where where did you learn these words from? (laughs) <laughs> and American parents are kind of pretty pissed off at Peppa Pig right now because their kids are starting to uh, speak like a posh English person rather than their American vocabulary. And even some of the words are starting to change. Uh, what do you mean they're starting to, like, they're starting to pronounce them differently? Yeah, so like there's certain things we'd say differently to people in the U.S., and stuff that UK people say different Ireland and it's kind of annoying if your kid starts speaking like a British person like <laughs> Americans some American people actually went to this of thanking Peppa Pig because they, they find their little British child now adorable <laughs> but I, I certainly know over here it's it's no laughing matter <laughs> 
when your kid starts to speak with a British accent. So it actually even has a name. It's called the, Pe- the Peppa Effect. And it has American kids reverting to mummy instead of mommy. Uh, using phrases like give it a go and pronouncing tomato instead of tomato. <laughs> and zebra instead of zebra. So, uh, like, but are they de- developing an accent then as well? Yeah, there's developing a, a British tone in their voice. <laughs> the show in the US is demand for the, especially over the pandemic, has increased phenomenally it's like 98 percent of children's titles higher than children titles in the u.s currently i think spongebob square pants is only the show that is slightly more popular than peppa the pig and is 112 percent higher ratings than what the uk gets itself so more people far a lot more people in the u.s kids are watching peppa pig than actually in the uk <laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah, so you're starting to see uh, US kids actually develop British accents. That's because, like, we're in the age group that Peppa Pig is aimed at. It's like when kids start to really develop their accents, and they basically do it from sounds around them. And since in the pandemic, kids probably are indoors a lot more, so they're watching probably a little bit more TV. And if their favorite show is Peppa Pig, that's on for hours a day, and if just started to develop a like a British accent, <laughs> like one. But what's really strange is like one of my cousins have twins, and they banned every banned Peppa Pig from the house. They said we will never ever show our kid Peppa Pig. They're not allowed to have any Peppa Pig toys. They're not even meant to know who Peppa Pig is. We will not play Peppa Pig for them at all. And they still got a British accent. I was like. Like the 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 mothers from Slovakia, the dads from Tala, and their kids have never seen Peppa Pig, but they talk with a slightly posh tone to the voice. It's probably from kids in school. I imagine so. So one dad said, "Last night I took my girl in to sleep, and she said, Daddy, can you snuggle me?'" I was like, <laughs> "What did you just say?" <laughs> One mother put up on TikTok in August. She was viewed more than 10 million times. The mother filmed her daughter, Hazel, repeating lines from the TV show like, How clever and oh dear. <laughs> Another person from Wall Street, she's a Wall Street journalist. She tweeted recently saying, My five-year-old niece in New York had an American accent before the pandemic, and now it has a posh British accent after spending the pandemic listening to Peppa the Pig. As you do, like. And then another one was like, my daughter commonly uses phrases like Satanav, petrol, and can I have a go? Can I have a go? Can I have a go is not that weird of a one. No, I was like, I was like What's for, can I have a go? Can I have a shot? Would it be like, Maybe over here, but like, can I have a go? It'd be acceptable anyway. Another, one, and then he said, like, last Christmas I had to put out freaking mince pies for Father Christmas, or as we call it, Santa Claus. Yeah, Father Christmas is Father Christmas, Father Christmas, Father Christmas. Yeah, and it, I think it's the accent that, that kind of annoys most Irish people is that they're. Like, I've heard people who, he's from Limerick, the mother's from, like, Dublin, and their daughter speaks with a post British tone to her voice, and you're like, where did you find that? (laughs) Father Christmas brought it. Father Christmas brought it. Yeah, so a lot of parents are, but it's a good way to, like, infect your culture, because I know over here, our parents probably were annoyed when reality TV came over here, I imagine we started adopting American phrases quite heavily growing up. I'd imagine so. Yeah, and like American culture definitely influenced Irish culture, especially when we were kids. So like it did happen the opposite way around, and even like stuff that is popular in the US, it gets adopted by the rest of the world because US TV shows are so popular. So this is us. 
UK revenge. Like, if you wanted to infect your culture upon a person, you just have to get kids addicted to your TV show. Yeah. I kind of feel like Irish animators need to start heavily making some child-friendly cartoons so we don't have people calling it uh, mum. Because I know a lot of Irish people are now reverting to mum instead of ma'am. There's loads of, like, uh, Irish animation things, but they they all make them, like, fucking American-based. and uh, Yeah, I, like, I, I don't... There's very few of them actually based, you know, like, animation things based in Ireland. Yeah, there's, like, uh, what's it, Brown, brown Bag? Is it, is it, brown Bag? Yeah, that's an animation. It's either Brown Bag, it's, like, an animation studio in Ireland, and then there's another one. It's just, like, two animation studios. And they made like the sound of the sea was made there, and there's another one that was made there. And but they're like, good movies. Used to, Fred Wolf used to be here. Remember him? Like, he did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. that was all made in Ireland. Yeah, like the, the, like Brown Bag it will do, but they don't have like like an Irish cartoon where they use Irish slang in terms of they did like, <laughs> hey kids, this is how you speak. You don't speak like this Peppa Pig bitch. There's one kind of like that that it's about Down Syndrome girl. Oh, really? Yeah, and then there was there's another one um, about a fucking farm. A lot of farmyard animals. See, that's... Just, yeah, let's focus on farmyard animals. Let's focus on stuff like that because kids seem to like animals. Yeah, and like... Oh, what's it called? I'm going to Google it. And they like they talk like proper, like... They use weird fucking Irish sayings and stuff. <laughs> They're breaking out the traveler dictionary, are they? Yeah. Well, I think that that's that probably is important to preserve culture in Ireland or in around the world because, like, no one wants yeah, to s- that's no link. Yeah, no one wants to see <laughs> their culture eroded by like either Western American. or American culture or British culture, any other culture. They want to. Probably see their own culture preserved, but like kids, whatever they're into, they'll watch and they'll, they'll adopt. We're going to move on, and we're going to move on to something very, very different. And this is a conspiracy theory that was started by Olympic athletes, and it's about anti-sex beds, Ken. Anti-sex beds. So there's kind of it's kind of well known that in the Olympic Village, there's a lot of hooking up that goes on between the athletes. Well, like that's that's naturally going to happen. Yeah, like you have these incredibly fit people in a small village, like peak fitness. Like what most people would say is their ideal body type for men and women, and they're you know some are running on a high, others are running on a low after losing, and they they went there hoping for score a medal, and well, they might as well try their hand scoring at something else since. <laughs> You might never be here again. And look at look at that Russian, <laughs> or look <laughs> at that Hungarian, or look at insert country, and you might as well give it a go. But because of the pandemic, there's obviously social distancing and other COVID rules in place in the pandemic that might make it a little bit harder for athletes to hook up at the games. And one or two athletes think that the organizers of the Olympics are actually to put a stop for this Olympics to any hooking up that might happen in the village because of risk of spreading COVID-19. Oh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. So organizers said athletes and competitors competing at the games would sleep on beds frames made from recyclable cardboard and mattresses made of polystyrene materials that would be refurbished and made into plastic products after the game. And the aim of this was to make the Olympic Games more environmentally friendly and to protect the planet. It's basically, it's less, less minimize the carbon footprint of the Olympic Games the best we can. But there's a few Olympic athletes that have their own ideas why they made the bed frames out of cardboard. Right, go on. So the bed frames are meant to break up in impact and that they're not designed to have two people there and that if people try to hook up, they'd break the bed and then they'd have to go embarrassingly to the organizers and ask for a new bed and then the organizers would know basically what happened. Would they really know what happened? 
Well, if you, if you say, oh, my bed broke, I was just lying there. They'd be like, what were you doing in your bed that it broke? And you'd have to go, oh. And be like, like it's, it's a bit kind of silly to say, oh, cardboard is made to break on impact. Doesn't all cardboard break on impact? So the manufacturer, Airwaves, have said beds can support up to 200 kilos. These beds are made to support up to 200 kilos. That should be comfortable enough to fit two people in. But some media reports are are kind of putting air to these claims that these are a pandemic measure, claiming that the cardboard will collapse under a weight of more than one person and that uh, it, this is basically a mid for social distancing because of COVID-19. And then there's an American distance runner called Paul Chelmo who wrote on Twitter Saturday saying that the decision to have cardboard beds was to aim to avoiding intimacy among athletes. I guess like it would make sense if you like if you had the Olympics games and you had a long distance runner and he had to pull out because he tested positive for COVID because like a few days prior he hooked up with like a Russian gymnast. <laughs> so I was like it would like it would be a bit of a pain in the hole, especially if it was a name that people wanted to see there. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be funny though. Yeah, exactly. It'd be funny. This card covered how? <laughs> like I said, like it. It's been a rumor that was circulated for years that like this happens quite a lot. Like the Olympic Village, like you sees a lot of people hook up, and like like you said, it makes sense. These are incredibly fit athletes. Like with a lot of motion going around the gym, well, or around the village, being the Olympics. But there's one Irish athlete that thinks it's fake news. He's okay. a, he's Mac Callahan. Anyway, is his surname. He said the idea that these are meant to be anti-sex beds are made of cardboard. Yes, but and apparently they are meant to break up on sudden movements. This is fake news. He said this while recording a video of him jumping on the bed. <laughs> and say, look, the bed is fine. I was jumping on this. So basically what he's saying is, hey, ladies, don't be shy. This bed can take impacts up to 30 seconds. So you know where my room is. <laughs> but like the uh, official Olympic uh, Twitter account actually thanked him in a tweet on Mondays uh, for clearing up the matter. <laughs> and I added, added that uh, sustainable beds are quite sturdy. Like the fact that they even had to do that, but like, he, yeah, well, the fact that they, I had to do this, but like, no, it's also even crazier than this. Ken is organizer are planning to give away one hundred and fifty thousand condoms at the games, <laughs> just not the athletes. No, to the athletes, <laughs> they're giving away one hundred fifty thousand condoms at the games. So, like, that will just like kind of a hint at what, what happens at these villages apparently that they're giving away 150,000 condoms now they did say that telling the athletes to take them home with them rather than use them at the village where social distance rules and coronavirus measures are top priority or priority <laughs> priority <laughs> but, maybe give them to them at the end then I imagine they're going to give them at the start. Yeah, yeah I, I imagine so too. 150,000. Like, how many Olympic athletes roughly would be in the village at once? Or in the games? I'm not, like, I imagine a couple of hundred. I imagine maybe a thousand athletes. Yeah. That's an insane amount of condoms to give them. Or is it? Is it enough? Is, is it? it enough, I, I say? Maybe it's not even enough. Yeah, maybe they'll have to invest in more. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 150,000 condoms are given away for athletes not to use during the Olympic Games. Wink, wink, non judge. So, so there isn't, or more than likely isn't, a ban on sex in the Olympic Village. Apparently, they're heavily encouraging it. Yeah, it sounds like they are, yeah. Well, I or they're trying to give mixed messages. I definitely don't I hope that the beds are going to be recycled into other people's beds after the Olympic Games, after them giving 150,000 condoms to the athletes. <laughs> or food products, for that matter, either. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this, 
this new bow came from the Olympic Village. It used to be a bed of some Russian athlete. Yeah, or, or anything. Maybe just don't recycle them. Maybe, yeah. Maybe <laughs> burn them. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck the ozone laner. I don't think you'll be able to reuse them if you're also then giving away 150,000 uh, condoms. Plus, condoms, not recyclable. Very bad for the environment. <laughs> A lot of people are going to try to flush them down the, uh, the, down the toilet. Down the cardboard toilet. <laughs> down the cardboard toilet. <laughs> well, yeah, this toilet's also reusable. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we're going to use some of the poo to collect the poo and we'll use it to light the torch as fuel. <laughs> we better go on to <laughs> Idiots of the Week. <laughs> this is about the show where it's created for idiots by idiots. And it's where we talk about people doing really dumb things. And the first story isn't really a story that you'd imagine is someone doing something dumb. And it's about trying Ribena. Now, I don't know, I never knew. People over in the US didn't have Ribena. I thought it was something that all around the world everyone had Ribena. Surely. Okay. I, I, or Blackcurrant I, I, as it's as is the general non corporate name of it. But yeah, you, I didn't think it was a thing. You think this story is from the US and it's about a woman trying Ribena or Blackcurrant for the first time. Yeah, she uh, so apparently there's None or very little black currants in the United States because in the 1800s, uh, there was some sort of a fucking thing. And oh, I, I was so, I was just ready to be so impressed there, Ken. Like, oh, I was like, oh my god, he's done some some serious research here. He has a, some a fucking statistic from the 1800s that why there was a, a queue on black currants. <laughs> no, it was some fucking black currant thing. Yeah, yeah, so, right, there was a fungus yeah. that affected, uh, I don't know, I'm assuming it just affected, like, vegetation in general, and it started on black currants in the 1800s in America, and it, oh, it attacked white pine trees and black currants, so the black currants brought it over, so they got rid of the black currants because they were using white pine trees for timber. They banned all black currants crop and they destroyed them all right up until the 1900s so like they're only relatively recently reintroduced but they're controlled and you can't grow them very many places so oh. americans don't use blackcurrant very often all right but wouldn't they import bottles of blackcurrant you'd imagine so but apparently not okay so it ca- catches to the trees again or maybe they might have them in like those uk shops yeah fair enough <laughs> That that might be where this woman got a bottle of Ribena. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, why why did she make idiots of the week? So she got this bottle of Ribena. She went on TikTok to uh, try it for the first time, and she opened up the bottle and she took a big drink out of it. And she she thought it was nice. She's like, yeah, it tastes really really good, but it kind of tastes a bit syrupy. It, it's kind of like syrup. And then like people from the UK and from Ireland and stuff are pointing out like you're a tit read the bottle like you're supposed to put water in it yeah so she then diluted it and she's like oh and now it actually tastes like a real drink uh, <laughs> yeah what what's your method of making blackcurrant do you go blackcurrant water or water blackcurrant blackcurrant water yeah so that's the way you're meant to do it like because if you put blackcurrant in second you have to like stir because it doesn't properly mix hey, see i never even tried that i never even taught of doing that the water blacker. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't properly mix. And I hate, like, okay, do it just to, like, so you can annoy yourself. Because it used to happen a lot when we were kids when we were given blackcurrant is a parent didn't know how to make blackcurrant. And they go water blackcurrant and they give it to you and you can't taste the blackcurrant. Uh, you can, like, it's not fully, it's fully flavored blackcurrant. It's a kind of a tiny hint of blackcurrant, but mostly tastes like water. And you're like, what is this? It also annoys when people don't put enough in. Yeah, exactly. Or people have put blackcurrant into a pint. Into a pint? Yeah, do you never see people doing that? Oh, I see in pubs a lot. People asking for a pint of blackcurrant. No, do you never see people like they'll ask for like a fucking a Guinness with blackcurrant in it? Or oh, ask yeah, that's, that was very popular. Like when Blackcurrant in it. Yeah, my, my, my mother used to do that. I don't know why I said mother there. Uh, my, yeah, my mum used to do that a lot. You were, going, you were going to say mum, were you? No, I, was, I said mother, which is also quite posh for an Irish person. Um, <laughs> mother. But yeah, my, my mum used to do that back in the day. She used to only drink glasses, and she used to ask for 
a bit of black currant in there. It definitely was a thing in Ireland to throw a bit of black currant in to yeah, see, I think that's Guinness. Weird. I think it's just to make it a little bit more sweeter. That is the harshness. Like, I can't imagine that it tastes very good. I tried it when I was younger because everyone tried it. In, I, like, it did improve the taste. Like, if you weren't drinking Guinness or you find Guinness quite bitter, like, a bit of a black currant, it does help. Obviously, now, like, I would not touch it with black currant. You'd ruin a pint of Guinness. <laughs> Showing black hair in it, but like when you're like eight, it's like it does help. <laughs> what did you say when you're eight? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you're eight years old and your parents are giving you Guinness, you'd prefer a bit of black hair <laughs> in a sippy drink. <laughs> but like they wouldn't give you a pint of Guinness at eight, I guess. but they give you like yeah, a, give I you remember. ends. Yeah, like your dad would be like, "Here, you can finish that." Yeah, they give you ends. This is nice. <laughs> And my dad always told me, I don't know, this uh, this must be like a kind of, again, an older person thing, because I don't think people do it anymore. He always told me that with a pint of Guinness, you're supposed to leave your manners in the glass. What do you mean? Manners. Did you ever hear this? No, never heard this. You're supposed to leave like about half an inch of Guinness in the bottom of the glass when you give it back to the barman. They wouldn't accept it back off of you, surely. Yeah, no, I, I, I remember this being a thing like uh, when I was younger, like going to the the pub I'd be like why is everybody always given like nobody ever finishes the fucking point when they're giving it back what's the story like my dad was like oh you're supposed to leave your manners in the glass oh I don't know my, my dad definitely didn't do that he'd nearly like he'd be getting everything out of that thing he'd make sure the cream all that little fuss <laughs> goes straight into his mouth he wasn't he was leaving any manners behind <laughs> yeah I remember like I remember even thinking like just I always thought this is really weird, but I don't think people do it anymore. No, my my family have to drink it fast. As like, if I if I put almost if you put it down on the table, and if in three minutes that pint's still there, like my aunties, my mum, my parents be like, "Oh, you might as well fuck that pint out there now. That's no good there. That's been sitting there. That's got that's ruined. You can't drink oh, that. Yeah, like, you wouldn't be able to you make yourself sick. If you're drinking a pint of Guinness, you have to drink a pint of Guinness in like. In space of, yeah, in the space of two minutes, or else, or else it's just it's fucked. Yeah, well, it's just like because like first few pints I'll drink it fast because like it's pretty good, but then it starts to slow down, and so someone was like, you probably should switch to a glass because then like you're getting a fresh pint every time, like instead of and I was like, I'd probably drink more then. Like, yeah, glasses are for girls. So, yeah, they are typically or like, or people that are driving. Or people that are driving. <laughs> no, yeah, but typically my mom would it used to be a huge stigma over girls drinking pints. You wouldn't want to seem to be only hardy girls now would drink pints of uh, Guinness back in the day. Yeah. The lady thing was to do is order a glass with a bit of Ribena in it. <laughs> glass with Ribena. <laughs> yeah, a bit of Ribena, yeah. Yeah, so like, obviously she, she drank this up on, yeah, and I guess if you're, you're not used to it, but like, surely they have dilutables in America. They have dilutable orange or dilutable lemon. Yeah, apparently they don't. Well, like, I always thought they did, but she thought this was an extremely strange thing to do, to have to put water into a drink. Have to make a drink yourself, basically. Right? Yeah. Why doesn't this come pre-made? Like, I would have thought Americans are used use, like, dilutable drinks. Yeah, it's mad. So, what was your story about a test of faith? Um, so uh, did you ever like? I don't know. Were you ever re- a religious person, like as a child or anything? As a child, as a religious person, yeah, definitely. Growing up in a Catholic household, I would have been quite religious growing up. And then, as I was like, I don't. And did did you ever decide that you wanted to test your faith? Well, the the wiper blades <laughs> definitely was <laughs> was a thing no ne- never really wanted to test my fate too much no. no this this woman in um it's fox 8 news so i'm assuming america again good job america yeah and um, this woman in america she decided that she's going to test uh her fate and she took her hands off the steering wheel of the car it was herself she's so she's 31 and her daughter, who is 11. Was she in the car with her? Yeah, yeah, so the two of them are in the car together. And she takes her hands off the steering wheel. She puts her foot down on the accelerator. And she said, God, take the wheel. And uh, she got up to a God, it was in, on the toilet at that time. <laughs> and he goes, oh, well, give me a second. <laughs> so she got up to 190 kilometers an hour. And she smashed into another car. 
well. Did she smash into another car, or did God smash into another car? Yeah, plane? and like the, the sickening part of this is, like, thankfully nobody was seriously injured. Yeah, but the sickening part is that she's taken that as a, a fucking sign that you know, yeah, God like protected her. Oh, she wasn't. She wasn't killed in the crash, and she didn't kill her she daughter. She wasn't killed in the crash. Yeah, yeah. Like that's that's a sign that God was protecting her. God also is going to spike your insurance premium for the next three yeah, years. Yeah, she's been charged with felony assault, endangering a child, and driving while suspended. Her license was already suspended. <laughs> her license was already suspended. Was well, this not this the first is, time this she? Is not her first, yeah, this is not her first rodeo. She just every time she's behind the wheel, she's like, "Now is a good time to test my fate." Yeah, now is a good time to see if God will save me. But it's like, like we said at the start, like there's people who ma- believe mad things of their religion and want to do like, like if you're an atheist, which I am, you, you kind of feel like all religions are a little bit daft. Mm. So like, it's kind of like it's hard to like separate the weeds from the bushes sometimes with like what people believe in. So, like, that's why I thought it was, like it's strange that like if I said I was a pagan and, and because we are having nice weather I went to a garden and slaughtered a sheep for, as an offering they'd be like you can't do that here they like it's my religion <laughs> <laughs> I'm offering them <laughs> do you want the good weather or not do you want yeah do you want the good weather do you want to you better slaughter a pig yourself probably haven't, haven't done it in ages <laughs> But yeah, it is. It, but like in terms of like testing the fate, I imagine that happens quite a lot. But is it a sin to test your fate? Isn't the whole thing of religion of being blind fate? Yeah. So like in a way, that's a sin to like prove like that you were that you were actually questioning your god. Yeah, you'd imagine so, but I don't think she didn't look at it that way. <laughs> a lot of people now are like cafeteria Catholics or cafeteria Christians. What do you mean they like they pick and choose what they're gonna? Yeah, like they pick and choose what they believe, but then they also like a lot of Irish people believe in karma, which is Buddhism. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of people also will take stuff from other religions and then they kind of incorporate in their life. Love, like, there's a lot of people believe in <laughs> astrology, uh, and how that that's not not necessarily a Christian thing to believe it. Yeah. So like uh, there is a lot of cafeteria Catholics or Christians out there where they kind of mingle things. Like my granddad used to believe that like used to say that psychics are a sin. That like going to a psychic is actually a sin because uh, I think a few of my family were were going to a few psychics and he's he was talking about it. he said that's a sin. You shouldn't be going to a psychic. That is against your religion. <laughs> it's the like it's mad just how people pick and choose what they. Like what they're going to go with. Yeah. It, well, it is. Like, I, do you remember a couple of years ago, like literally like maybe two years ago when people were like, all the migrants, like the, well not migrants, all the refugees from Syria and stuff were being brought into Ireland. And people were like, oh, they're going to come and they're going to destroy our Christian ways. Um, okay, well, sit down there, Veronica, because you've got four kids <laughs> that, okay. out of wedlock, four different fathers. And uh, don't you go to Turkey on holidays every year? Yeah, mm. yeah. And this is like, so do you have you ever had a takeaway on a Friday? Because I'm pretty sure you're not meant to eat meat. Yeah, do you eat meat on a Friday? Do you have sex when you're not married? Uh, you, clearly, you do because you got four fucking kids. <laughs> have you ever <laughs> used? Uh, have you ever used the Lord's name in faith? Jesus Christ, I have. <laughs> Yeah, have you ever used contraceptive? No, you haven't. Okay, you, yeah, you, you've got that one covered. You've got four <laughs> yeah, fucking kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> have you ever used contraceptive? <laughs> yes. You, I guess you have. <laughs> like, fucking hell. Yeah, well, like, I think we like the, the whole Christian thing is now dead. Like, we believe, like Ireland overwhelmingly, apart from Ross Common, uh, vote for gay marriage. Like, we yeah, allow abortions. That- that's another one. Like that's what I just thought it was mental. They're like, oh, and they're going to come over here and they're going to erode away our beliefs, our Christian beliefs. But um, yeah, let's get rid of like, you know, let's bring in same sex marriage. Okay, yeah, you're going to get your Christian beliefs there. Let's uh, do away with fucking the the need to actually be married before you have kids. Okay, yeah, yeah you're going against your Christian beliefs there again. 
<laughs> yeah, I am reverting to c- c- paganism. I now I'm now a pagan. I recognize it as pagan. So if you see me slaughtering a pig, it's because of my religion. <laughs> I don't know how you need to be to be a pagan. Yeah, uh, you don't need anything. Yeah, you know, they don't even have a church. They just have, have a few trees. Yeah, generally you just have to wear um like a couple of pagan symbols and stuff. Ah, fuck that! I'm not doing that now. You know, like the little necklace things. Like, chances are, well, that's another one actually, where people are all like, "Oh." Well, oh, Irish oh. people are always kind of converted paganism beliefs into Christian Christian beliefs. Like Halloween's a yeah. fucking great example of that. Halloween, Easter was changed to coincide with paganism. Christmas was changed to coincide with paganism. Saint Bridget was a pagan goddess. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, there's loads of shit. And even like it now, there's. Uh, fairy trees are protected in like land in in Ireland. You can't couldn't destroy uh, a, a fairy tree. I actually know fairy. a guy who is uh, fairly religious, right? Yeah, and he he's fairly religious, and he is very much so. Like, oh, oh, this guy in the town that I live in, he, I forget. He lives in Selbridge. He's like this guy in Selbridge. Oh. He built a, a house and he tore down a fairy tree and he had nothing but bad luck since he did it because the fairies came after him. Yeah, and, <laughs> and even like, like uh, even around Nace, there's like what? like little fairy doors, little fairy trees. Like they have yeah, little that, doors. That's done to kind of like entertain kids, though. Yeah, but it's still like in terms of um, but this a is slight nod. Like, this like, is a fully grown man with five kids. Sure, I think up in there's an airport. Um, army airport and there's a guy protesting for the last 10 years because of where the army built the land was on a kind of sacred tree or like some some spot so he has like this like thing outside his house it's like a dummy outside his house in terms of like as a protest but he's given out about like there's some kind of like it was on some religious land or some kind of like pagan thing and it's like Maybe it was a fort or something like that, but like he was—he has a, this like crazy looking doll outside. When you drive past the barracks, his house is opposite, and he has this like some fucking scarecrow looking like thing outside. <laughs> and then they like, give bad luck or something. Do you remember a few years ago as well? There was a um, there was a group like a religious group protesting. They wanted the hill of Tara leveled. No. Because it's like it's the most important pagan symbol in Europe. Oh, really? Yeah, not not like just Ireland. Like it's one of the most important pagan symbols in Europe is the Hill of Tara. Why? Um, no idea. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but I, I just know that a lot of like uh, European pagans like come to the Hill of Tara around the solstice to pray. Well, not pray, but like for. Uh, like fucking rituals and stuff. Is that like a? Is there still pagans out there? Is that still, is there still yeah, yeah, there's a lot of pagans out there. Yeah? Oh Jesus! Never knew that. Anyway, there you go. All the way to end this very weird religious show. We had some burn. We had <laughs> pagans. We had slaughtering pigs and slaughtering sheep, and we even had the Olympic Games. Yeah. <laughs> Truly very show. Yeah, don't tell we give variety in this show. We don't give variety in this show. We certainly do. Getting very close uh, to our big show, the 204 show. Yeah, still don't know what, what's happening for that. Um, Yeah, I don't know either. We'll do, <laughs> we'll do something. Anyway, we'll have things and stuff. Things will happen and stuff, stuff will happen. Yeah, for our 204. Don't worry. We got this. Maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers let's, crossed. We'll, let's we'll just skip up. it. Let's just skip it. We'll never... The running joke is like we didn't have a 204 show. Uh, that, that's going to be the <laughs> big reveal. We're going to go from 203 to 205. Yeah, exactly. And then we're going to talk at 205 about how good 203 was. Or 204 well, was. What we'll, uh, we'll talk about we'll have 203.5, 205. I think we should just we'll just skip two or four and then talk about how good it was and that it was so good that like all the podcast services took it down. Yeah, exactly. Joe Rogan complained, um, then to two Johnnies was like 
take this away. Um, yeah, and then I fucking love science. It was like, we don't do podcasts, but like this, this podcast can't be allowed. Go on. Yeah, and, and I think that that's what we should do. There's no such thing of a fist. There's too much facts. This is infringing on our things and Irish history podcasts. They talked about history. <laughs> So maybe yeah. we should get them on do a, like a, a a joint like super shy talk podcast. No, I do not want to talk about history. <laughs> what what would we bring to the table, Ken? I don't know shy history. <laughs> I think they cover shy history pretty well. <laughs> We'd be like, yeah, they're what, a bit serious. What what was that lad that like tried to take over Ireland but didn't? He was a prick. <laughs> yeah, I did. I don't think anybody ever tried and didn't. Well, there was. There probably was. Well, Brian Baru kept a few lads out. But after that, after he died, that's when shit hit the fan. Yeah. Let's, we're now talking about history, Ken. Let's stop the podcast here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll be back with our 202nd show of the year. Of the... Not year. Of the, of the year. Of the podcast. <laughs> We've run out of things to talk about. And, yeah, we're going to tune in soon. Uh, we'll be back next week with our 203rd show. Our second show. <laughs> Good luck. Shut up and sit down.